Hit start recording and say hello everyone and welcome to another episode of To Be Released. I am here with Zenrot. Hello. And I'm also here with Defree. Hi. Welcome back to the show, Defree. Always nice to have you on. Hi. How 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 you been? How's it going? How's it Hi. hanging? Hi. Well, that's perfect. I should also <laughs> say <laughs> Nah, doing pretty good. Happy to be on. Um just, you know, living life, I guess. That's fair. That's fair. Do, uh, the how your gotcha treating you? Treating you good? Uh, for the most part, I've been playing that new Seven Deadly Sins one, and it refuses That's to right. give what me. What are you uh, even playing these days? Yeah, yeah. So now, uh, these days, I'm mainly playing the Seven Deadly Sins one, um, the Dokkan and, and Legends, of course. Other than that, I've, I've been playing some of the One Piece ones, the Bounty Rush and the Treasure Cruise, and that's about it. Other than like, I also play Memoria Freeze a little bit, kind of on and off. All right. Uh, yeah. I, I will say before we get into the Dokkan talk, now that I actually have you here on uh, on on live and not on digital, where I could hear you type, can you please tell me why you like the Legends changes? <laughs> Just real quick. The Legends changes to the to the battle system specifically. I don't. I hate it. Okay, good. Because I was told. I believe Gorish said that you liked them, and for the longest time, I was going, "How?" I think, yeah, I think Gorish was the one who said. Uh, he said, "Like I hate them, and I but D Free really likes them. I don't get it, or something like that." No, I don't like them at all. And you, you I know don't what? Think anybody I, likes them. Yeah, I don't like them, but I've been embracing them lately. Been trying to practice little tackles and combos with tackle and stuff like that. But for the most part, I hate it. Like the stuff, like for example, the inability to strike cancel. It's it. I understand that from the perspective of they don't want you to just hang back and just farm dragon balls for like five seconds or whatever. Mm -hmm. But it's also very inconvenient because you can't cancel quick enough to get out of stuff anymore. Like you'll just go bursting and and like use a strike card and just go rushing right into them. If they use a strike card too, you both are stuck you can't cancel that if they're using a special move you can't get out of that if you're using a strike card until you get to mid-range like there's a lot of little stuff like you'll get hit with a blast card whereas before you wouldn't get hit with the blast from long range it's just it's stuff like that's really dumb and there are other little things that i have in pet peeves for the battle system that i just do not like but i don't have any choice but to adapt to it so <laughs> <laughs> mm, yeah, really. There's no like real hope that they'll go like. Actually, we made a lot of mistakes. We're correcting everything back. No, they like it. They like it. And the the other one that I kind of don't really care for, but I've learned to play around was the penalty for. So when you drift backwards, you start losing vanish. You'll be at full. Your meter will decrease gradually if you stay at that long long range so it's something you just have to adapt to and play around. And then also they have the combo compensation for each action you do. It also decreases the amount of damage you do. Now, you still want to do sidesteps and stuff just because it's good for other reasons, but it's like they keep on nerfing stuff like that, but then also turning around and producing cards that have card draw speed bonuses and key recovery bonuses. That screams exactly sidestep with it. me. Because <laughs> they want you to, to be like, hey, yeah. I, who, who, we make yeah. the gameplay shittier, and then we release characters that don't have to follow the shitty rules that you don't like. That's exactly what they're doing, and they've been doing it all along. Ever since that first nerf to sidestep, they've been trying to milk the heck out of it. And and whenever somebody gets too comfortable oh, with it, God they go damn ahead. And... <laughs> I guess Sorry. he just died. No, so... he, he really cared about the sidestep. He was like, God, <laughs> no. So no, we're in this dungeon, and this boss has a really obvious mechanic that you it, it's a one-hit kill if you're a fucking idiot. But otherwise, it's fine. And our goddamn healer just crumpled like a fucking... <laughs> <laughs> the only person that can't be a goddamn idiot other than me in here, and he's the one that gets one shot <laughs> by the 45 second long cast time attack. And that really is just in summary about the battle changes to Legends. <laughs> is that it feels like that? Actually, that yeah, basically. That actually... I have a lot of pet peeves, man. Mm. Like I, I have a lot of gripes with it, so I could go on and on. But I just don't. I'm. I've again. I've learned to adapt to it, but uh, I just don't like a lot of the changes. Some of them are cool though. Okay. Uh, I think the main. I'm my okay main... with a lot of them. I just I don't like that the game feels so much slower now. Yeah. It feels more uh, turn based. It feels slower. It feels not as smooth or the the fights just seem. What's the word? They're they're missing. I don't know. I, I, mm -hmm. It feels like yeah. I guess that's what it is. It also like the the changes to the system. It it made it a lot more casual. Which I mean, you can argue whether that's good or not. That's fine. But it also feels like like literally anybody can beat anybody now with the new system because things like 
uh, the card draw system, the way it works now. I get my damn Rise and Rush guest like maybe 60 or 70 percent of the time. Like it's not even funny. Um, and just little stuff like that. And there's the whole mechanics of it. They've penalized and reduced and changed everything that was largely skill based or or at least required some semblance of skill in this game. So that's it. Even if not skill, at least execution. Yeah, or timing, like little things like that. Because yeah. again, it, it is a little tap mobile game. Like it is what it is. But you do, <laughs> it still feels worse. Like I couldn't do all of that stuff, but I could do a lot of it. And it feels worse now trying to do it. And I'm like, why am I even fucking doing this? <laughs> because there's no point for me to be doing this. And it's I'm just making me fuck up. And then the other guy is gonna capitalize on it and just mash the shit out of all the cards in his hand, and I'm gonna die. Yep, exactly. So it's just it's weird. I don't know. I also am not a big fan of them releasing what is basically the John Cena of units by releasing a super Ve- a super Vegeta that literally can win at any point of the game. It doesn't matter how much like uh, damage you've taken away. It doesn't matter if he's the only unit left. If he is the only unit left, congratulations. There's about a 50% chance he will still beat you. <laughs> well, the thing is, um, when it comes to that, I mean... I, I wasn't really surprised by Super Vegito's release and how good he was because it's like the Gohan is there. So, like, the Gohan does the same thing. Gohan is like the ultimate comeback unit. <laughs> and, uh, you still will probably lose that game if you're in a position to win it. He even goes neutral just because. Like, that card is so good that when Super Vegito was released, and I was like, oh, yeah, this is going to be, he's going to be totally nuts. And he is. The best thing that Super Vegito does in general is just the main ability of removing buffs. I've been saying that for a long time. Like, he, he stacks buffs just for existing, but. Being able to say, okay, I'm going to remove everything you can do is crazy. It literally invalidates Gohan, for example. If they're in the matchup, like, say, Goku goes down, Gohan gets all those buffs, whatever the case is. Say you're using maybe even the yellow Otherworld Goku. He applies buffs and stuff like that. Super Vegito says, with one button press, all of it gone. Like, that's crazy. So, like, the card is, he's too good. He's he's very powerful. And not to mention he heals and does he gets a million buffs for existence. Yeah. Think of anything he doesn't do. He has a yeah, green card that he, he literally just does says, everything. I'm just going to stop getting debuffs. <laughs> for the I no longer wish to and be debuffed. And I'll take reduced damage. Yeah, reduced damage too. The only thing he doesn't do is cover change with a, with a cover, recut, uh, cover cut. Yeah. He does the cover change knockback, but if he switches in for a blast, he'll take full damage. Other than that, I mean, he does literally everything. He even has blast armor on the ultimate, so basically perfect all right well i'm glad we were able to get uh that out and he of the works way. really well with super saiyan 3 go tanks which makes me want to kill myself so oh, oh you mean man. mr guaranteed faint mr 150 percent faint yeah to this day i haven't missed it i use them every day to this day i haven't missed it a single time no i haven't yeah guaranteed i haven't faint. even missed it when it's not all three characters still yeah alive. Me either that's what i'm saying I haven't it, missed like it. yeah even when he's the last one somehow i still get it every time <laughs> guaranteed um, faint I also like that they've introduced that fusion banner and it has completely killed my want to ever play PvP because everyone who was like, I'm missing two units now has those oh, two yeah. units. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's they that was so convenient and so cheeky how they left most of those units off of the anniversary banners just so they can come back uh-huh. with a secondary banner. <laughs> So they can sell them to you later. Uh, yeah, and you know what? The funny thing about those banners is, is that they um they they have the seven percent rate. They still have the one percent overall for those units. But I swear those banners are blessed because I've done maybe about four or five summons. I pull like three Brolies and like two two Gogetas, and I'm like, dang man, everybody out here having good luck too. For the most part, I've seen a lot of people having really good luck. Um, and I've seen now a lot more Gogetas and and a lot more limit broken Gogetas too. Because of the fact that he wasn't basically on anything since his release, so it's going to be a he lot. Is of the that. only one I didn't get. I did. I did real good. Otherwise, I got God Vegeta all the way to like five stars or some shit. Yeah. See, Go there's going to be a lot of that stuff going around yep. in Go Tanks too. Uh, and speaking of Broly, I don't see him ever anymore, and it's really nope. sad. I don't see a single. I saw one Broly. I think the entirety of last season. It's very sad. You know, a key and fusions is just fucking everywhere. Yep, it's it's just sad. It's extremely sad, especially for someone like me who's like, I'm kind of t- uh, tired of running God Key, even though it is, without a doubt, the best team I have because I was able to get uh, Whis, so it's actually, I should be using that. But I was like, I want to try out these Android things, even though their team is not actually ready and they only have, like, actually three units they could use at any given point yeah uh so it's been uh, it's been a, a learning experience of i guess i'm just gonna lose this game okay i've lost this game <laughs> there's no i'm just gonna lose <laughs> i'm just gonna lose you guys have yeah, fun because that goku is just the best 
Yeah, it's it's been crazy. So there you go. There there's your Legends update. If for anyone out there who was missing Legends Roadwork, <laughs> there there it is. <laughs> Let's get into the big boy scale. D free, as you remember, we put these units up on the big boy scale and then no. we... oh, are you seriously doing it for this unit? Yeah, we're doing it for the for these oh. two units. To be fair, there's two units on here. We're gonna be putting both these units on the big boy scale. Um What's the other one? I will say the other one is – well, I'll say the two. The first one is going to be LR, uh, Father and Son, Mecha Frieza, and King Cold. And the other one is Say a Man number three. Great Say a Man number three. Oh, okay. That one's fine. All right. I, I'm surprised you didn't choose four. Uh, that's because – oh, you know what? We can also choose put four on the big boy well, scale. I mean, there was a lot of them that you could have chose. Like the SS3s, like uh, Darkness Toa. That, you got a lot hey, of ammo hey, there. Hey, listen, man. We can't burn all our material in one episode. <laughs> Sometimes Dokkan doesn't release anything, and for those periods, I need these guys in the background. <laughs> 10 out of 10. SS3, Gohan, 10 out of 10. All right, <laughs> fine. It. So our preemptive for them, they're on 5 out of 10s on the big boy scale. When we yep, get to them, well, yep. the scale's out of 5, so they're no, 10, out 10 out of 5. Out of 10. Ten out of five, yeah. There you go. There you go. All right. Well, we can do this then. That's fine. And it's about time for me to have to dip out. So, uh, just walk me through it, and we'll do it. All right. Um, I'll say for let's see, what the hell is these LR? So the first LR is LR Mecha Frieza and King Cold. They're the Wicked Bud line leader, a hundred percent. They deal their passive skills: attack and defense, sixty-six percent. Additional attack, twenty percent per Wicked category, up to sixty sixty percent. And then key plus nine when only fighting a Super Saiyan uh, category enemy. And then their only categories are Joint Forces and Wicked Bud Bloodline. So, how are you feeling about this guy? It seems like you are not super into these LRs at all. This LR at all? Uh, I mean, if I was Goresh, I'd be like, you know. <laughs> I'm super excited about this. Personally, uh, I, 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 so I did my video for them, and I, I thought they were impressive. You know, for a free card, they're very good. Uh, I do like the Wicked Bloodline because they're going to be on the Wicked Bloodline team. I like the Wicked Bloodline uh, bonus passive up to sixty percent. That should calculate separately for a bonus. Yeah, uh, it should calculate anyway. Uh, yeah, yeah, one hundred and twenty-six percent and uh, to attack and 66 percent defense so apparently it does not calculate separately mm. but regardless though that's a lot to get on a free lr overall and versus a super saiyan category enemy they get nine key um as far as that's concerned you're gonna have that situation pop up a lot so other than that i mean frieza looks like uh he's he looks like he's the baddest bitch in the universe that's what i gotta say oh <laughs> this the pose freeze is going is pretty strong in that <laughs> Oh man! Now that you brought it up, he really is doing a really. <laughs> He's super offended with there. He hey, is. he looks he looks super offended. I said in my video, I was like, "Wait, why is he standing like that?" <laughs> well, he's back on Earth. He's ready to torture until Goku comes back. He looks like the baddest bitch in the universe. I'm telling you, it's true. I think Wicked Bloodline should have been translated to "baddest bitch" on, on, in the in the galaxy. <laughs> But other than that, yeah. I remember feeling like they're uh, – so I believe this is – I think I had the same kind of problem with LR, Kale, and Khalifa in terms of their super attack animations. But this one is more pronounced is that I think up until the final shot, it just feels like they were really just using every single asset they had for Mecha Frieza and King Cold in the uh, possibility. Yeah, they were kind of doing that. It looks pretty nice though, but they found they found creative ways to kind of reuse old assets basically. Yeah. It's one Especially of those... with Kaelin K- Khalifa, that's probably, the, in my opinion, the most profound example because you can look at their Ultra Super and literally pick out three or four different attacks or assets that they use on different cards that they just mash together. So it looks nice, but you can see it. Yeah. Uh, it's so. also just unfortunate that they're also coming off of LR Majub that had his complete own animations. <laughs> well, that's also because there wasn't a shit ton of Majub. Yeah. That was, they, had, they had to do it. Yeah. They had no they choice had to... on that one. <laughs> It does kind of like shine through and looks like weird though. Now that, yeah. but with that, that's kind of the unit in itself. He's free to play. How you feeling for the big boy scale? Ah, uh, uh, three out of five. Yeah, that's about what I'm feeling too. How about you, Zen? How you feeling about? Uh, I'm also gonna give 
Jeff because they released an LR that is literally being killed in the art of LR trunks. <laughs> oh, wait, are they? <laughs> He, it's literally the fr- fucking Frieza just dying in his LR art. He's getting yeah, cut in half. It's, it, it's true. That's true. Huh. All right. <laughs> they he's shouldn't like, have done Mecha he's Frieza. He's like the bitch made LR that's like, yeah, you got him, but, you know. Hmm. That's right. what's going to fucking happen. The funny happen. thing about this is King Cold is using a sword, too, for a super attack. Oh, <laughs> he is using the sword. It's the only time he uses a sword. All right. Yeah. Three out of five for them. And then real quickly, because you got to get head and out, uh, Great Saiyan Man number three. Um, five out of five. Just going to straight up say five out of five? Yeah, he's it's too much swag, man. Have you seen the super attack? I have it's seen the super much. attack. Yeah, he, does just, the, he does the whole thing where the sword gleams and then he puts it down. Yep. Oh, nope. Ten out of ten. Got to do it. All right, ten out of ten, which would be a five out of ten on the big boy scale. Five probably. out of ten. Yeah. No, 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 oh, no. Ten out of five. Ten out of five. Ten out of wow. five. Wow. You totally tried to screw me there. Yeah, tried... you tried to flip the script on him right there. You just made him fifty percent. <laughs> I wanted to see if you were paying attention. Sure, well... At the end there, if you were paying attention. Uh and just to run down his passive skills, attack and defense, seventeen percent, three and a chance to perform a critical hit, poor time travels category ally yeah, on the he's team. Good. And then he loses defense 30% every time he receives an attack, but then he counters right afterwards. And I think I remember seeing, I also saw your video just to see if he would actually hit that. Su- I think everyone was has been afraid of Super Saiyan 3 Broly for reaching zero defense, that he would be the same way. Yeah, he's not going to hit uh, the zero, basically. Because uh, how it works is he's overall defense reduced by 30. Or, so, like, whatever the maximum number is at the time, Mm-hmm. It just gets reduced by 30, so capable of hitting zero, right. if that makes sense. Yeah. So it doesn't stack on itself. It's So it it, it actually, it's like 100 gets ne- uh, reduced by 30, it goes to 70, but that 70 from there, if it were to, I don't even think it stacks, by the way, but if it were to stack, that 70 would have been a new 100, and you would just lose 30% of what 70 was. Oh. So he technically wouldn't actually get there. <laughs> so he would never actually reach zero. He would get low, but at a certain point, he would stop losing a whole yeah, lot of defense. Exactly. And then on a full time traveler team, he's got 119, basically 120% to attack and defense to begin with, and then a 21% crit chance. So you have a unit here who has two separate crit chances between the potential system and the passive. So he's going to crit quite often, right? Uh, and then he has up to 120 basically to those, and he has the counters built in uh, and everything else as far as like the main only downside of this unit was the defense down, but even that wasn't that big of a deal. He was still pretty impressive otherwise. Hmm. All right. Just the links aren't that good. He should have got like prepare for battle, but I guess. He should have. But I guess the fact that he was a Saiyan man kind of brought down his yeah, skills. Yeah, they... They, they generally screw over the same man link sets uh, if they're not going to give him, like, shocking speed. They didn't give him shocking speed, so, no, yeah, it screwed him, him over. They gave him hero instead and <laughs> in fighter. <laughs> oh, on a side note, the thing is, too, with him, if you can proc uh, if you can proc heroes specifically, actually, or if you run the Great Saiyan Man 4 support, who also has hero, by the way, mm. you actually are able to mitigate the defense loss anyway. So it doesn't really matter. Oh, yeah, because you get, like, a huge defense percentage. Up yeah, level. so hero is a defense 20% link, and then if you run him with the Great Saiyan Man 4, who has hero, that's uh, who uh, the Great Saiyan Man 4 has a um, 30% defense support passive. So you're able to mitigate that by a lot. So, All right. That works out. And again, if you have not seen his counter attack and his super attack, it is all dealing with swords, his special attack. The funny thing is, is that a lot of think I think a lot of people are now looking at super attacks a little bit differently ever since like units like Super Saiyan Goku have basically broken the seal in terms of what is a really good super attack. I think Um, that really started with Goku and uh, Frieza, to be honest. Yeah. Or they just completely stole it from the show, but it looked really nice. Yeah. I think it became like the tipping point where it was like Goku and Frieza was like a one off compared to all the rest. But then with Super Saiyan Goku, there suddenly was just so much that you couldn't like you couldn't make excuses for a lot of the super attacks. But I think his super attack is done in the old style, but it's still really cool to look at. So it ends yeah. up. Yeah. No, out. it's definitely the old style. And what they've done is, um, you know, they've done it with Goku and Frieza, but they did it a little bit last year too with um lr vegeto and gogeta in their super attacks they have the close-ups and stuff you see their the close-up on the face and you know they're they're not the last units to do it i mean goku and frieza have a whole on animation like that and even some more profound examples would be uh characters like 
transforming trunks. You know, he has that. He uh, has that close up and he has all of that stuff built in <clears throat> his active skill and stuff like that. Also, the Zamasu, like a lot of those units actually have very good animations, to be honest. The Goku, though, I think the Goku just has the best animations overall, though. Just the whole complete package of it. Yeah. But they've been trying, I'd say, for the last year, for the most part, kind of on and off. But really, since since Goku and Freeze is when they kind of upped it a little bit. But you can tell when it's an old style, when they don't actually do little things like the close ups and use more actual art versus using sprites. That's what it is. Yeah. A lot of times they use sprites instead of actual art <clears throat> so that's what it is it also kind of makes sense for these just because heroes was released they released like six hero units so it's like you can't actually have that level of detail for every single one of those <laughs> units <laughs> you know i was actually speaking of heroes units i was actually very disappointed when i saw goku and uh and vegeta's super attacks yeah. they're just the generic attacks they and i was cool. also really disappointed because uh, the last Heroes banner with Zeno, Goku, and Vegeta had very good super attacks. Those looked really nice. They even had the, the close-ups and everything. So, like, stuff like that, where you have, like, the Goku, the Zeno Goku SS3, he's putting his hands in the front, and he's doing the Kamehameha, he cocks it back, and you see it from a back perspective. It looked really, really nice. And then these cards came out, and they're really ugly. They got hit with the fact <laughs> that, that they're support units, so their super attacks don't matter. So they got... <laughs> The guy hit with that uh that form of just like regular yeah. guy like gun. Yeah, basically. <laughs> All right then. Well uh how so you've already given your scoring for this guy. He is a ten out of five on the big boy scale. Yeah, one hundred percent. Too much drip, man. Too much drip. What how you feel, Zen? Uh I'm going three out of five because my only knowledge of this guy is from Super Dragon Ball Heroes and he doesn't do jack shit. Yeah, he doesn't do anything. <laughs> he just fucking sits around and is like, you go do this. Well, the reason why is because he's Trunks, and Trunks is always useless. Why you gotta be spoiling shit? <laughs> why <you> gotta... <laughs> <laughs> Literally, Trunks is useless in every game, but they always make him the focal point. He's always useless. So, there you go. Hmm. That's true. I think I'll give him a 4 out of 5. I really like... I, I actually kind of bummed out I wasn't able to get him. The one multi I did for Heroes gave me two of the, uh, the Zeno Gokus. <laughs> So oh, I would have preferred just one Zeno Goku and this guy, but I didn't. So that's a four out of five for me. So combine that together, he gets a seventeen out of five on the big boy scale. Yeah, <laughs> pretty good. And with that, I believe it's time for you to go get some food in you, D Free. So thank you for joining us. Definitely, no problem, man. My pleasure. I'm sure I couldn't be here a little bit longer, <laughs> uh, but definitely have me on next time. We'll be able to stay a little longer next time. All right, sounds good. We'll get you on for the exact next week. Look forward. To, we'll do this again next week, and this time we'll start on time. <laughs> sounds good. I'll be up for it. All right, sounds good. Have a good uh, right. dinner. Yeah, dinner. It's dinner. Fuck, it's late. <laughs> Bye. All right, guys. I'll see you later. See ya. It's right. not late at all for you. It's 7 p.m. What the fuck you mean it's not? Okay, you know what? You don't, I, don't have, I don't have to deal with this right now because we're going to get some fucking questions. <laughs> Let's, uh... It's pretty late. 7 p.m. is late, dude. That's 7 when, p.m. is not late. That's when the, like, the gangs are out roving the streets. Actually, there's no gang. It's actually very nice daylight outside of my room right now. <laughs> it's, it looks very nice. Uh, so the word is roaming, not roving. No, isn't it? Isn't it roving? If they're roving around the streets, that means they're on like cars, right? Bro, oh, I don't, I, I don't agree with you that roving is uh, accurate. I don't want to, I don't know what is accurate, but I don't think it's roving. Okay, you don't know what what is right. You just know I'm wrong. <laughs> so thanks yeah, for the, basically, thanks for the vote of confidence. All right, again, questions. If you have any questions, be free to leave a comment in the to be released or wait for me to ask for questions on Tuesday on Twitter. Whatever one works. The first, we always ask you to get uh, YouTube questions get priority. So this question comes in from YouTube. It's from Tara Bate who says, Will you ever continue some of the games you never finished on the channel? Rush of Destruction, Fire Emblem, Blinding Blade, and Final Fantasy Tactics come to mind. Uh, thank you for the question, Terabate. The answer is yes. The reason why a lot of those series stopped is because, for one, Reshift of Destruction literally became we need to grind uh, Tristan for 20 hours. 
Yeah, Wretched of Destruction, the reason we stopped is because it's a bad game. Yes. And it's not a bad game in a way that, like, we can play it through and be like, ha this is so bad. It's a bad game in that we literally cannot play it until we grind Tristan up to the point that we can actually win. Yeah, and because my emulator on this, um, this laptop isn't very good, there's a good chance where absolutely everything will be lost on screen. So it will be like, not only will, so recording Rush of Destruction means that if we have to record it first, because if we wait too late into the day, my laptop overheats and the footage gets screwed up. So we have to do it early, but then that affects every other game we can play. And when all we're doing is just grinding Tristan, it becomes actually very hard for us to, there's also a thing of like, I just don't want, if people want to do nothing but see us grind Tristan, maybe I'll actually throw up a poll later to see whether or not they want to just see us grind Tristan. Do you want us to fucking grind Tristan forever? <laughs> because no joke, I think we will maybe be grinding Tristan for the next 20 episodes. It is going to take an extremely <laughs> long time to get shit done. The thing I would want to do is actually have a Twitch stream where we grind Tristan live. And then, but the thing is, is that a lot of the reasons why I haven't done that is because of my current living situation. We can't do that. So I want to save it for the day for when I can do it again. So that's why we don't get back to it. And the same thing kind of goes for Fire Emblem Binding Blade. I kind of want to do it so where we record it in parts, but then I edit it together so that one part is only around like, 20 minutes long or so as opposed to the current like border almost borderline three hours it takes for us to record one session yeah fire emblem fire emblem works best if you do it in like a best moments montage type thing yeah because i again i like laugh at the silly moments because good god that game is long yeah it's really long so i again i want to continue it and also the same thing goes for final fantasy tactics where there's parts where i feel like i need to grind but that's not going to be enjoyable. And if I don't grind, we're going to get that thing that happened that last time where it was 40 minutes long of us trying to beat one level. And it was extremely tough and extremely hard. And that's perfectly fine if we're if I have my regular setup. But when I don't have my regular setup, the footage could be easily lost. And then at that point, no one gets to really have any fun because you don't get to see the stuff we see. And you'd be like, this is why we're in this terrible situation. Isn't this fucked up? What you see is like, oh, no, they're actually just stuck on this one fucking like uh, bag <laughs> on for the past <laughs> for the past 10 minutes. It's been nothing but a bag on. So, and yeah. this is totally off topic completely. Go ahead. To this guy's question. But Bagon made me think of it. Uh, you're picking up Pokemon Masters, right? Uh, probably. Good chance. It looks so good. Dumb. I'm mad at how good it looks. I'm, you know, I'm just going to say, again, people should be happy for a mobile game. I'm just saying that I don't think any real mobile Pokemon game has ever really done it for me. So I'm interested to see how this works. either, though. That's the thing. is Most of them, I'm like, this shit sucks. But this one looks fucking good, or man. Be, or what happens? It what happens is that you get a Pokemon Duel situation where suddenly it just breaks. Suddenly everyone it, starts, it just can't work anymore. Uh, yeah, everyone starts complaining about Deoxys for some reason, and then Valley's really angry, and everyone stops playing. <laughs> yeah, I, I am worried about the gotcha aspect of it. I feel like that could very easily ruin it. But it looks very cool. Yeah, so I want to see more, and then I'll try it out for sure. Again, I'm willing to try any. Um, pokemon stuff at least once even if especially if it's free uh thank you for the question i hope that answers it the point the, the the basic the very easy way is we're going to get to them eventually the easy I... answer to any of your questions about any of our production is Wokey's living situation sucks and his computer is like computer from like the 80s yeah and also my internet sucks the only reason i'm able to upload a lot of the gameplay stuff i do is because we do it on obs there's no editing at all i say let's fucking go that's why you the most recent actually it's not going to come out yet by the time this is out but the most recent final fantasy thing is like six minutes long and it's me fucking around in an emulator is because i don't really have time to not like to edit stuff together so stuff just kind of happens so basically um, woke is living 20 years in the past yes and the fact that i'm able to do anything is a miracle and i'm glad that you uh stay and watch everything so i hope that answers your question thank you for the question now let me go find the questions for Twitter. I got screwed up. I need to go past all this, all these loving messages now. It's all the big love fests that happened. Oh yeah. All right. Let's see. That was exhausting in a good way, but it was exhausting. Yeah. 
That's uh, as Neo said, as he gave up in three, it's very hard to be positive. <laughs> Again, you wait for me to ask for questions on Twitter on Tuesday. The at is purplewokey. Find us, ask us, all good. First question comes in from Kevin AX at Kevin Eleventh, and he says, "What's your uh, your top three favorite fast food restaurants and your favorite thing to get from them?" Uh, thank you, Kevin, for the question. Kevin's a good friend of mine. He's the one who got me all. He went to Japan recently and then brought me a whole bunch of stuff. So Kevin is good dude. Love him. Let's see. Top three favorite fast food. One, number one, Pollo Loco. I don't know if that counts as fast food. I'm just going to say Pollo Loco. I was about to say, fast food is a hard one because what, what counts as fast food? Yeah, I'm going to assume... Like, it, are, are pizza places fast food? That shit this is like 30 Subway minutes. or like Quiznos. Are those fast food? I, I'm going to say if they're a brand for our intents and purposes, we will say they are fast food. If you go to a Subway sandwich and you order your sandwich, it should take around... Uh, 15, maybe not, not even 15, depending on how long the line is, it doesn't take very long. Uh, for pizza, it would take you longer to manually make a pizza than for them to get you a pizza. So I'm going to say it counts as fast food, especially, okay, little, fair enough. especially when little Caesars, when I go in there and I slap down $5 and say, give me a pepperoni pizza and they toss one at me and I say, good day. So <laughs> yeah, that's pretty much how the little Caesars interaction works. It's not a pretty situation for anybody. No, and I appreciate them for for being honest. Uh, but for me, I, again, it's gonna be Pollo Loco, and then I think it's gonna be uh, Taco Bell, and then McDonald's. Those three. But a lot of that is also because like I have a McDonald's and Taco Bell right next to me. And then also, I want to say if I had a fourth, it'd be Jack in the Box, but it's those three. And then for Pollo Loco, I think I've said this before, but if not, get ready for this. For the 10 plus years I went to Pollo Loco for all my life, which meant going basically every single day, I only ordered a two piece uh, breast and a wing combo, uh, well done with rice and beans and chips instead of a, instead of a tortilla. And I got that for eight, 10 years straight. <laughs> No changes. Damn, that's dedication. It is. So much so that they actually knew uh, my Pollo Loco do me by face, and they had already started. Sometimes they would have my meal done before I had even ordered it. They That's how well they knew that I would never change what I wanted. <laughs> what do you feel, Zen? Uh, I don't know if any of these places are fast food or not, but, uh, so, uh, Jersey Mike's is like a sandwich chain. Mm -hmm. uh, they're way too fucking expensive, so I don't eat there very often, but the fucking sandwich is really good. It's like a roast beef and provolone. Oh, it's nice. Mm, that does sound pretty and good. And then there's... I don't know if this is even a chain, but there was a pizza place near me that is not there anymore, so it might have been done so badly that it is no longer in business. Mm -hmm. But it was called Pie 5. All right. That sounds like a very good name. Yeah. So it it was like a Subway, but for pizza. So you went in and you picked the crust and then you picked all your toppings and shit. It was like a little personal pizza and they would put it through the oven and then it would just come out the other end and they would give it to you. That's fucking uh, cool. That's it cool. was fucking great. It was so good. I have no idea why how it could have possibly gone out of business because it's gone. But every time I was in there, it took forever to get the food and get out because the line was like out the door tax evasion chances are something yeah like i don't know if it's yeah that was akira toriyama's money laundering to get out of paying his taxes but uh that would explain why the line was so long you had to you had to wait a real long time for an akira toriyama pizza <laughs> but it was i'd always get a uh and peppers mm -hmm. so good mm. so sound very good and what's mm, the what's your man which uh answer? I'm going to say Pizza Hut, and not because I like it. It's actually fucking disgusting. I agree. But I have like a lot of nostalgia from being a kid tied up in that restaurant because like, um, I had just like, – like the, the, it wasn't technically my first, my first gaming system where I was old enough to play video games without just like smacking a controller while an adult played the video game. Mm-hmm. And it came, they had the Crash Bandicoot commercials. Oh, they did. They did, yeah. They had, they had Crash. 
And when you got a stuffed crust pizza, it came with a fucking demo disc of Crash Warped. Man. So my dad and I got one and played the shit out of that demo disc while we ate that nasty ass pizza. And so now every time I get one, it just makes me happy. It makes me sick, but it makes me happy. I forgot about um I forgot the Pizza Hut had demo discs. Actually one of the, the my favorite features on uh Giant Bomb when I have premium is the demo disc derby where they go back and look at all the old demo discs. And it's a lot of like, okay, here's another demo of Tomb Raider in this other <laughs> in another demo disc. Yeah, I, my dad worked at a toy store when I was young. He he doesn't work there anymore, but he did when I was a kid. I think I had like every demo disc from 1995 to 1999 wow and that's in the library that shit that's another thing where it's like uh today's kids won't understand i'm like what you had a yeah demo like you don't get what a demo disc is man shut up with your illegal downloading of whatever video game you want <laughs> yeah with your fucking free downloads of all video games at all times back in my day i only had a console and i didn't understand what shareware was so i just got the demo disc <laughs> All I had was a console that let me play one stage of Tomba. <laughs> That's it. And I grew up with an N64, so all I had was this VHS copy of Donkey Kong Country, uh, Donkey Kong 64, where they talked about Donkey Kong 64. So I didn't even get to experience Donkey Kong 64. It was a different time back then. I also say I forgot for my other two. Uh, for McDonald's, it's Chicken Nuggets. And then for Taco Bell, it is a Nacho Bell Grande. In in terms of fast food that I can actually eat, McDonald's is probably in my top three somehow. I think it's just well, because it's but... super easy to eat. <laughs> like that's that's yeah, weird. it's just like it's it's easy to shovel in your face food. Yeah, exactly. You don't even have to taste it that much because you can just throw it back like a pill. Exactly, one hundred percent. Thank you for the question, Kevin. Feel free to ask whatever questions you want. The next question comes in from another friend tflt toaster of fun who says no questions but a great but you're great and i love you heart thank you toast good old friend from modcast days toast doesn't uh couldn't could not get him on even if we asked him to because he's the founder of the forbidden episode ah uh, yes god damn it i'm so bummed out that i lost the audio for the forgotten episode of Modcast. <laughs> where if you ever Modcast were... darkest episode that's the episode that formed the Mew Mew Force because I had to ask my friends because you told me we can't release this episode. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's so bad. We can't do it. It's so bad. We can't release it. And I said, um, is it OK if I ask my friends to record with me? They don't know anything about Dokkan at all, but they're available now. And I don't want to back when we were doing like modcasts with many people, we all had different time zones. So it was actually very hard to get together and record. Um and I think you said, I don't care, just don't release that that other episode yeah. at all. I, I think my exact response was literally anything is better than what you have right now. Yeah. <laughs> so put it put it out. So, and that's what formed the Mew Mew Force. So I got my good buddies. And... I can't like without having the footage to show people it's hard because I can't articulate how bad it really was. But it was like of my we recorded the whole thing. Yeah. And it was like an hour long of uh, way too far into a bit that wasn't funny for like oh, 20 God. minutes. I think, And I, at that point, I had checked out like completely. So I was just playing Xenoverse, like not listening at all. No, I think that your exact thing that came on is that I think for the past 20 minutes, it's been nothing but <laughs> majub. <laughs> and... I, it was like. I forget what the bit was. It was something no. like, let's make the worst possible Dokkan team ever. No, and that resulted in like 712 Majub sucks jokes. The The idea was he was going to make the world's worst team. No, the world's best um, strongest duo on Earth team. So it had original hit. It had PyCon. It had um, it had B Pan in it, and the thing is, is that at a certain point, I realized this isn't funny. But I said, I'm "Yeah, gonna... when we got like seven minutes in, I think both you and I realized, like, oh, this is not a good bit." No, but I said, "This is not <laughs> maybe not hitting. Maybe if it keeps going, eventually it will get funny, and it never did." Oh, it'll work its way back around to zero and start going positive. Never did, and it did not get funny. And I had, I had like, 
And it was so long, guys. I, I can't explain to you guys how fucking long yeah. this bit went. And Coley was also in that episode, from what I remember. So there was a bunch of... Coley like... was in that episode, and that was I think that was the one where he flat out... like I forget what word he drops. Um, but he's English, so it's one of those words. Five. Yeah. I don't know if it was like cock or something, but he says it like constantly the whole episode. I think I have an exact quote from Coley from the episode, which is, I'm going to take my cock out and spin it around. It's like so... I forget, he goes on to like a two-minute, like borderline art film style monologue about something so we go from the bit about how haha isn't it funny that Majuv isn't very good to we so that was for like 20 minutes and then after that Coley is just cock though and that's like the whole thing yeah again early growing pains but if we had ever actually I totally lost the time that yeah. episode is uh, it should be lost. But again, if we had ever released that episode, I think we were maybe five episodes deep at that point. It would have killed it. it that would I, I don't think that was so bad. I don't think we could have bounced back from it. it was, like nobody would have watched after that. It was impossible. Uh, so again, thank you for the messages. Love. Love you too, bro. I hope you're having a good time. Uh, next question comes in from the guy hype from Goku Black, which is Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Johan. And he says, um, why is he not in the God and Potera category? And he is talking about the monster that eats Hit and Goku Black. The dumbass thing that just looks like it's Hit with Goku Black's hair? Yes. Which is actually apparently, now that I've seen the cutscene, it is absorbing Goku Black and Hit. I don't know what the situation is where Hit and Goku Black are on the same team as us, but that's what's happening. He eats them. And then he gets the hair, the earrings, and all that. I'm going to say it's the same reason Copy Vegeta doesn't have God Key. You can't get God Key from a copycat. Yeah, it's fake. Yes, he's a faker. Faker? <laughs> You're not <laughs> even good yeah. enough to eat those words. A fake hedgehog around here. There you go. That's the, that the answer. He will belong to the shadow category, which is full of a bunch of fakers. So he'll be Goku Black. <laughs> And a bunch of other units. They... Be Vegeta. Yes. All the good stuff. Uh, next question comes in from Bull Narat. I hope they said that correctly. But he says, okay, so basically when, do you th when you think about it, isn't Cell X just Mothra though? Real talk. Okay, but really, what is your opinion on Dragon Ball Heroes? I kind of want to know. I'm going to assume Cell X is a... Um... I, I have to have seen it before. He's like the giant one that looks like a fucking... He looks like Harutagarn almost. Bug ass and like six right. legs. Well, I'll look at this. You tell us about uh, Dragon Ball Heroes, how you feel about it, and I'll look up Cell X. I low-key really like Dragon Ball Heroes, but I don't like to say that because Dragon Ball Twitter hates Dragon Ball Heroes. But I actually really like it. Like, I don't take it seriously. Like, it's not there. Look at this incredible quality content. It's just literally like, what if we just like nostalgia boner jack off everything in Dragon Ball ever into this one thing and you just play it. And I love it for that. Huh. Yeah. Also, now that I've looked at Cell X, this does not look anything like fucking Mothra, Mothra at all. At all. No, not keep, even a little bit. It's just a bug. Keep Mothra out of Cell's mouth as far as I'm concerned. Also, I also found this when I was looking up Cell X, and I want you to experience it now because I had to see it. Uh, all right, all right. I'm going to drop this in the Discord, so maybe d will see this, and he'll get to experience it too at some point. <laughs> oh, my God. Okay. That, that is uh, that is Beerus combined with Cell, but really it's just kind that of... That Cell sword Beerus? It... Oh, my God. There's no just there's no justice we can do for this. I'm actually gonna remember to put this up. I forgot. The, I'm gonna put this. I'm gonna have to put it in the video because I can't. I can't rightfully explain how off putting this image is. It's disgusting. So we'll put that up there, and I hope everyone can enjoy that. And thank you for the question, Volnerat. I also think Dragon Ball Heroes is pretty cool, um, but I also don't treat it seriously. But I feel like you could also say that a lot for Dragon Ball sometimes. So. I the know. time I feel like almost Some, yeah. Sometimes you can just enjoy shit, dude. It's cool. You don't have not everything has to be canon. Yeah, just have some fun. It, it's silly fun. Yeah, don't get angry about the fact like video game form. Like, 
Yeah, don't don't start treating it like this. Clearly proves that Zeno Super Saiyan Four Goku can take down Ma- Mastered Instinct Goku in one hit, and this is the proof. And then you can say, "Fuck you, that's not true." You don't have to treat it like that, bro. You can just treat it for the fact that you know what those people said when they wanted them to fight. Wouldn't it be cool if these two fought? <laughs> and we don't. It'd be cool to see these guys fight. <laughs> like that's it. Like it's just fucking fan servicey bullshit to make you go, "Wow, this is fucking cool." Yeah. Like, the yeah. most recent trailer has uh, Super Saiyan 4 Kaioken uh, Gogeta. Why not? <laughs> Fuck it. <laughs> like, That's the fucking mantra of Dragon Ball Heroes. Why not? Fuck it. Yes. Like, and it's great. I like that about it. Yes, yes. It's great. Maybe about it. It's pretty great. Mm-hmm. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Nighthawk. And he says, what are your favorite Dokkan cards and which ones do you not like? Something other than a Rayleigh for you, Wokey. People are starting to realize that they have to put in don't choose a Rayleigh <laughs> because... <laughs> Please stop choosing a Rayleigh in all of your questions. Yeah. I'm like that Sheen image where he keeps bringing in his fucking toy <laughs> where I keep bringing <laughs> in a Rayleigh. Uh, I'll say... Have you brought a Rayleigh into show and tell? Yes, for the 17th time. I'll just... I'll say Kid Goku. That new Kid Goku is fucking awesome. Uh, I don't care. He's really cool. I like him. I really he's like the him. first one. Like, I know you talked about, uh, or like Deepree said that Goku and Frieza had like a similar, like, but I, I still think the kid Goku was sort of the mark where they really started upping their game when it came to super attacks. Yes. I would also say if it wasn't for, um, the fact that super Saiyan Goku just wins it by having pure, the most animations, I would say the, the punch from kid Goku is top. In terms of, like, if you were just going to put it from singular animation, Kid Goku's punch that literally punches anyone through the fucking stomach is the best. It's really good. And then when he's, Very cool. Yeah, and then when you win, if you win with that move, he's fucking falling forever with a KO sign as he's crying. <laughs> that is really good. <laughs> yeah, so it's Kid Goku. I don't give a fuck what anyone else says. And by when I say anyone else, I mean Zahal. Fuck you. He's a good unit. <laughs> the classic. The classic. So what, what do you say, Zen? Uh, the new Super Saiyan Goku. He's easily my favorite unit that's ever been in the game. Yeah, he's very good. I wish I had him so I could run him. I only The, the fucked up thing is that I only want that LR Super Saiyan 4 Goku so I could run Kint Goku and Super Saiyan Goku together. <laughs> <laughs> run team good animation and then have to be forced to use the shitty animation of super saiyan 4, okay, super saiyan 4 yeah uh next thank you for the question the next question comes in from matt at master m who says what do you think blazing needs to be a good game again and i'll say again uh, um, no there was a very short period of time where it was like the king i know i know Short period of time I'm I'm picking fun at the that poor blazing players who are unfortunately not. I, I can't happen. imagine there's very many of them left. Is that one guy right? There's still that one. I I I don't know his name, so forgive me if I'm not. There's no way trying to shade. I know there's at least one guy who uh, YouTuber who's still oh, heavy Kabuki? into. Yeah, 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 Kabuki's still heavy into blazing. Yeah, Kabuki. He, I'm sure he's having a, a decent old. He time. is heavy into blazing in the way that the captain of the Titanic was very heavy into the Titanic. <laughs> <laughs> he's might as well the fucked up thing i saw was that apparently the uh the other players of blazing do not agree that he should go with the ship and are trying to actively get him to stop playing by like uh fucking... so i mean he is he's the truth the the, the the truth of um oh everybody fucking hates him and they want to fuck his shit over for no reason really great that's unfortunate stop doing that stop just shitting for no reason but yeah, well, what do you think? You, uh, I can't say my requisite, which is just say add more girls because I actually don't know. They probably do do that, and it's not helping. I know there's a lot of girls, and there's just it just doesn't matter. Yeah, it's not. Uh, fix fucking go back in time and make Blazing Bash not happen, and then you got a good game right there. There you go. There's your answer. Hope that helps. Next question from is from Yaoi Mom at AX Bitch. And that is literally in her at. Please don't get offended that I call my <laughs> sister a bitch. Uh, even though I do call her that from time to time. And she says, if I was a boy, what do you think our dad would name me? And I feel like he would have named you Roberto Carlos, probably, because he loves that soccer player. <laughs> if he... if he, uh, I say it would be Hector. 
<laughs> Good chance, Victor. The, the, <laughs> they have the double name. And then to follow that up, uh, thank you for the question, Yaoi Mom. Again, I think your name would have been Roberto Carlos. Comes in from my brother, Admiral Nux, who says, What's your top 10 Pandora moments? And Pandora is our tiny chihuahua that is not Chloe. Because we have two po- uh, we have two chihuahuas. There's the one that's super aggressive named Chloe. Tiny chihuahua, by the way. Uh, the Mavis countdown clock has started. Oh. So, <laughs> All right, we're going to have to get these questions quickly. FYI. Um, I've top- She's getting aggressive. It's hard to nail down top 10, so I'll just give my top one Pandora moment, which was when... Um, so recently, because of where we live now, Pandora got to reunite with her birth mom, which is a, a tiny chihuahua named Mimi, who doesn't have her teeth anymore because she has to... You know, chihuahuas lose their teeth over time, so she always has her tongue out. And um, they got to reunite, and then when Pandora looked at her face, it was a real looking of like... This can't be my mom. <laughs> this can't be where I came from. <laughs> this cannot be me. No, this cannot be me. And then if there was a second, she also has a sister named Buttercup who is just slightly bigger than her. But that's enough to trick my sister for when uh, she sees a Buttercup outside. She goes, Petra, what are you doing outside? And then she was like, oh, wait, that's Buttercup. But the same, <laughs> they look exactly the same. So there you go. Hope that helps with Pandora. Uh, next question comes from Soul hashtag coin pool gang. He says, why are people so desperate for clout? And the answer is, I don't know. <laughs> they just are. <laughs> Everybody likes attention. It's true. Uh, sometimes I can definitely fuck with your head sometimes. You know. To be fair, I'm no, I'm no different in the sense of like i don't know actually i don't go actively looking for people but i do get happy when actually people subscribe to my youtube comment on my stuff or retweet something but i also don't feel that need to be like i need to go out and like get myself out there if that makes sense i don't know if that any of it makes sense (laughs) sort of the idea is like people like to feel like people enjoy what they do i mean that's all there is to it really yeah so I get the, I think I get the idea behind it. I also think you don't need to go crazy over it. Like it's okay. Sometimes the six people, like the six people that constantly watch my, no, I was going to say it's more than six. Fuck you. Fuck me. The 20 people who watch my persona three series are the true ones and are the true fans. <laughs> Sometimes it's okay to just do stuff for some people and just make them happy. That should be enough for some people. At least that's what I yeah. feel. That's what I feel. Yeah, that's a good way to put it. Uh, next question comes in from Blue. He says, I question the truth of your purpleness. I'm going to assume this guy came from you because he does not follow me. So <laughs> I I am purple. Just don't be fooled by the blue skin on my whooper. There's purple. Purple is meant to be like re- regal, or like a regal color. So you can see the king shape yeah, in whooper. it's the color of kings. Yeah, so when you look at a whooper, you go, that's a king. That's a perfect king. Uh, thank you for the question. Next question comes in from Shade, who asks, I was going to ask about the thing that happened today, but happy thoughts. Of course, when I asked this, this is around the time when, uh, uh, Etika had uh, learned about what happened to him. So to give context of that, but he says, how has your month been overall? Uh, overall, man, I think it's been pretty good. I've been in terms of my YouTube stuff. I think I've been pretty happy with what I found, you know? I've been doing some good stuff. My numbers have slowly gone up, so that always makes me happy. And in terms of actual life, I feel like we're starting to try and get things back to on the right track after being off the rails for a very long time. So still living day by day, but I think the month has been pretty good overall. How do you feel, Zen? Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I agree. I think I'm I'm at the point where I hit a pretty consistent like 1,000 on every video. is is really good for me, and I like it. I, I got a lot of new ideas coming in for stuff that I want to do. Yeah, it feels nice, right? Just the consi- yeah. it's the consistency part that really helps. It feels like it's like when you watch a tiny flower grow, you're like, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah all right, That's great, yeah, it's perfect. So thank you for the question, Shade. Um, 
Mark6000 says, Global Janemba EZIA when? And the answer is next week. Join us next week when Janemba says uh, uh, And the final question comes from Wet Towelettes who asks, Do you think a new Godzilla game could be profitable? What kind of game would you want it to be? That new mobile game sucked. It was a clicker game. Um, I think a new Godzilla game would need to be... It needs to be a fighting game. You can't do a one-on-one... Not one-on-one. You can't do a you're just Godzilla. Because at that point it just becomes like... Actually, you know what? Unless it's like Mega Man. You can't do a game where you're just Godzilla fucking up a bunch of monsters. (laughs) I think you could do that and it would sell okay. Yeah. I was really disappointed when it turned out that Arc System was not working on a Godzilla game because I thought that would have been bitching. I don't know, but mainly because... Automatically assume any leak that has Arc System works in it is fake. I know. Because they've become nerd messiah ever since Dragon Ball Fighters. But it had... So now every single time any nerd who doesn't know jack shit about fighting games wants a fighting game made, they go, oh my god, Arc System works is going to make it. And you're like, yeah, you only know Dragon Ball Fighters and you don't know all the other extremely unpopular failed-ass fighters that they've made. Yeah, and they've made a bunch yeah. of fighters. And to be fair, I think they have, like... It's always been, like, a niche thing where they've always been to a very small amount of people. But the thing so, I... So anime fighters is actually, like, a genre of fighting games for people that don't know this. Um, yeah. It's not... Ju- and I don't mean fighting games based off an anime, not like My Hero Ones Justice bullshit. Yeah. But uh, they're also called, like, Air Dashers. It's, it's a fighting games that have specific movement qualities to them. That are almost always in anime titles and almost always in Arc System Works games. Yep. I would... Guilty Gear and Blaze Blue are like the big ones. And that shit is like not comparably popular to your shit like um, Street Fighter or all that kind of shit. No. So it, it's very weird to me to see this company that has been kind of in the background and then they make a Dragon Ball Z game and all of a sudden they're like, fighting game development it's very weird i I will i will say i think it started my kind of paying attention to them happened around guilty gear zerd sign it's when they were able to make it was the ps3 game where it just looked fucking gorgeous and it was like the the art was absolutely beautiful and it plays like a fighting game that i kind of don't understand like for would a anime fighting game work for Godzilla? No. Would it be hilarious to see Godzilla air dash? Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Are you kidding me? If if I want, I, basically what I want is for Godzilla to be in a Marvel vs. Capcom two style of game where someone yells, "Do you want to see a fucking infinite?" And it's Godzilla's doing the drop kick nonstop. Why well, you just actually put him re-release Marvel yeah. and put Godzilla in it? perfect so who would he replace in that game <laughs> like just all the people they don't have uh, license for anymore in marvel so iron oh. man <laughs> <laughs> iron man iron so, man no more iron man only godzilla and then instead of uh, um fuck war machine it's mecha godzilla yeah exactly oh, that'd be and funny. then instead of whatever iron man villain because i don't know any iron man villains because nobody fucking does Fuck you! I know the Mandarin. I know. I know the 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 white. The only reason anyone knows the Mandarin is because of how horribly offensive the Mandarin is. Listen, just because he's horribly offensive does not mean take the fact that he is the only extremely powerful Asian in all of comics. That can't be true. Wait, Iron Fist is a white guy, right? Iron Fist is white. Cannot okay. stress enough. There's got to be another strong Asian. I refuse not to believe the, that the not Mandarin. On, not on the level on the Mandarin. You have no idea how overpowered the Mandarin is. I know the Mandarin is busted. I just refuse to believe that there's no powerful Asians in comics. I'm just saying not on the level of the Mandarin. Okay. So you have, I believe, Fine. I believe, uh, I want to say one of the Bat, uh, Batgirls was maybe Asian. I don't remember. 100%. I would need to ask uh, Jace for my DC Comics update. He would be a better idea on this. Actually, you know what? I'll save this a question for Jace to ask him where the word well-known Asian comic book is power. It, well, isn't there a, an Asian Hulk? Yes, but he's also not on the same level as uh, the Mandarin because you say Asian Hulk instead of just the Hulk. And it's and, and, uh, Amamendius Cho, I think is his name. Odeus or something? Yeah, yeah. something like that. The totally bodacious Hulk, I think, is the name of his Hulk. Is it really? I want to say it is. Let me check. I want to say it's something like the totally awesome Hulk or something. The totally 
Oh, the totally awesome Hulk. <laughs> yeah, that's the name of his series. <laughs> Again, there is stuff to like about um, Asian characters. And for what I remember, Andamendia's show is also like, oh, man. Um. He's also very good, but I just want to say in terms of like actual powerful villains, that was their one chance was Iron Man 3 was for them to say sorry for the 50 plus years of the Mandarin's extremely racistness. And they said, how about no? <laughs> how about we just keep that intact? Well, we keep it intact, but also he's not real. And the bad guy is just some sort of white dude who and Tony was like kind of mad at once. Yes, and then also when I bring this back to all the fans of Iron Man 3 as to why I don't like it, they say, but in a scene they filmed uh, months after the movie was released, it shows that the Mandarin is real. And I say, that doesn't fucking matter. If it didn't make it into the movie, guess what? Iron Man 3 still sucks. Also, there's never going to be a fucking Mandarin movie because Iron Man is fucking dead. So This is a double spoiler now. Why are you going around just dropping... As if everybody on the goddamn planet hasn't seen that, that stupid movie 12 times. Or at least the trailer for uh, Spider-Man uh, Far From Home. Apparently, yeah, Spider-Man Far From Home, where the very first line of the trailer is, Oh my god, Tony Stark is fucking dead, and I'm very sad about it. Yes. Apparently, there is there was one person who waited. I waited for this to happen, because I knew it would happen. Who waited uh, at least over two weeks to see Endgame, avoided all spoilers, and then was immediately spoiled by Far From Home when the trailer played. Okay, well, that's stupid as fuck because literally the beginning of the trailer is Tom Holland saying, If you have not watched Endgame, please don't watch this. That, so, depending on where you're sitting on the theater, there's not, not enough time to escape. It's like. Oh, they put it in front of movies? Yeah, they put it in front of the movie. Hey, that's different. That's fucked up. I thought he just saw it on the internet, and no. I was like, I get for me he went to okay the yeah if it was in a theater that's pretty fucked you it's, shouldn't do that i mean that was literally the only guy that happened to but it still sucks but it's also really funny he is the only man alive that that happened to but yeah it is that definitely sucks i i feel for him in that instance yes so of course thank you for the question the movie. i mean they got to i mean they know the ending but whatever i'm also gonna say that if you did not see that shit coming then you had not been paying attention <laughs> that's what i'll say yeah it's not a exactly a surprise ending. Yes, it's not a surprise at all to me specifically. The only surprise was there was no real surprises actually. Actually, you know what? There was one surprise. But we'll get into that. We don't have time to get into that. I hope you enjoyed our answer, which was put Marvel vs. Capcom 2 out again, but make it God replace Iron Man with Godzilla. Yeah, no Godzilla, no Iron Man, only Godzilla. No War Machine, only Mecha Godzilla. Man, what if they? You know what? You know what Marvel should do now for um and their end game re release since they're so desperate to bypass. I think what was it Avatar? Avatar. They need to uh, replace Tony Stark with Godzilla. Godzilla <laughs> for <laughs> so giant ass Godzilla. <laughs> so like when he's at home, he's like <laughs> going with Pepper and he says, "I love you 3000. He just does the loud fucking fucking <laughs> Godzilla scream. <laughs> At the end, he gets the he gets the fucking stones, and he when he instead of saying "I am Iron Man," he just goes, fucking snaps his <laughs> giant ass hands. Godzilla hand, and he's got a giant infinity gauntlet with very tiny stones on it. Yeah, and his uh, his mecha suit turns him into Mecha Godzilla, so that way you get both of them in there. And then you have to wonder why does Godzilla need a mecha suit? <laughs> Oh, it'd be so good. I would love that version of that movie so much. Just for the dramatic scenes of, like, Captain America talking to Tony about how Captain America wasn't there. And it's Godzilla. Yeah. Or that emotional scene when he's, uh, he's dying and Tom Holland is there comforting Godzilla. <laughs> it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be okay. Come on. <laughs> It's just a dying Godzilla. Oh, I would love that movie so much if they did that. That would make me go, you know what? That works perfectly. And then with that giant Thanos fight, it's just his leg fighting. Like, you can't even get his full body into it. Looking <laughs> at him while Captain America and Thor are fighting him. Oh, God, that'd be so good. Well, with that, that's a good episode of Two Release as far as I'm concerned. <laughs> So we'll see you all next week. Uh, hopefully we'll be able to get D-Free on 
He already promised next week, so I'm gonna hold him to it, <laughs> regardless of anything. Uh, so we'll see you next time. Goodbye. No, that's not how we end the show. All right, everyone. <laughs> I just remembered I was so busy by Godzilla. <laughs> uh, remember, remember, kids. Shit. One moment. Oh, right. We do have an ending for we this show. We do have an ending for this show. Remember, kids. Don't play Dokkan, because if you do play Dokkan, you go to hell before you die. That's no good. Goodbye, everyone. Bye.